So, this is an unboxing of the Sony ICD PX370. Right, so it comes complete with built in storage, 4 gigabytes, which is good for 159 hours recording time, with a caveat. It does accept a micro SD card, has something called USB Direct, and it takes two AAA batteries or LR03, and it says it's for lectures and voice memos. Okay, on the side we've got uh, something about battery life, so it can take about 62 hours worth of recording time while it's an MP3 at 48 kilobytes per second in mono. And we've also got some software that comes with it as well, so it's looking like the actual device itself is compatible with Windows 10, 8.1 and 7 and Mac OS 10.10 to version 10.14. And there's something called Sound Organizer as well, so that might be software. And that says it's compatible with the Windows operating systems, not the Mac OS one. So on the back, we've got some automatic level adjustment. It's probably some sort of automatic gain, which is good. Clear voice playback, so some sort of noise reduction going on in there as well. And a scene select, um, which looks like voice notes, meeting, interview, and lecture. So it says it does actually come with the batteries, sound organized too, uh, which is stored in built-in memory. That's probably gonna be some sort of file management uh, software. All right, let's get to it. Right, so plastic cover. Come on. There we go. Right, so it looks like we've got some instructions. A bunch of instructions in different languages. So, nope. 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 So, what was the last one you go for? There we go, operating instructions. We'll just keep them there for now. So we've got the um, dictaphone itself and some batteries. There we go. Nice that they actually include some batteries. I wasn't expecting that. And they appear to be Sony branded ones. Mm. Right. Right, so first impressions, it's about the right size, I thought it might be. Um, got a little bit of a sticker on here suggesting we're going to get something looking like that, maybe. Okay, it's quite light, it feels quite light actually, it's not bad. We'll pop the batteries in now. Straightforward enough. All right, so what we've got on the front, we've got Sony and some sort of LED at the top there. Obviously got the stop button and then the record and the pause button. What I do like about this is it doesn't feel as though you can press the buttons by accident. You've definitely got to go for the button. I like that. It means you're not going to press anything accidentally. And there is an indent on the record pause button, just a small indentation, which means you can feel the difference between stop and record. So if you haven't got quite sight of this, you can actually feel your way through things. Hey. So we've got some circular dial thing here. We've got a play button in the middle, DPC, no idea. Backwards, forwards, maybe seek. Uh, some playback options, repeat. Uh, we've got a back button, also doubled with a home function a T mark and some options. It looks like there's a built-in speaker. Place for your lanyard, although it doesn't come with one. So just on the bottom there, you've got a USB. Doesn't look like a port. And on the back, it definitely says USB, so. There we go. 
So that can plug directly into a laptop or whatever device, so there's no need for cables or anything like that, which is superb. Right. So on the right hand side, we've got what looks like a cover, it says micro SD. And sure enough, there's a slot there for a micro SD card. Doesn't come with one, but that's fine. And we've got some volume buttons on the side as well. Again, it doesn't look like anything you're going to catch by accident. Positive feel to it. And on the left hand side, you've got what looks like the power button. So you've got hold, and then you've got some sort of center bit, and then power on. Oh, and at the top, we've got the actual microphone itself, plus a headphone jack and microphone jack. So the reason for me buying this is up until now I've, I've tried recording a few different ways directly into the camera which sounds poor and shocking. Um, I've also bought a Rode mic which is what I'm recording on now um, and that is fine. It has got a dead cat on it even now but outside when I'm quite a bit away from um, the camera it does pick up a lot of wind noise and when you try and fix that in post it just makes the background noise like the road and things like that a bit louder um, you can kind of hear what that sounds like in a video just up here so the video after that I took a lavalier mic which um, was attached to my chest and that went straight into my phone and then I recorded the audio using an app on the phone, which worked really good. Um, the sound quality was great, and it wasn't an expensive one, it was, it was quite cheap actually. Um, but the downside with that is I lose the use of my phone, which I use to um, sync with my camera so I can see what I'm recording, much like now. In fact, there you go. That's using the smartphone link to the mirrorless camera that I use so that's quite useful for composing shots, especially where you can't really see what you're doing. Um, so getting that back, the phone back, is good for me. So I bought this, it was relatively inexpensive. I think it was around about £30, uh, maybe a little bit less. It was on offer. Um, and it got good reviews and all the rest of it. So there we go. So judging from the bit on the back, um, or side even, I'm going to slide that up to on. Sure enough, it says power on. It says set date and time, yes. Record, okay, we've got some options then, so it seems quite intuitive. Yeah, I'm not gonna look at the, the instruction manual until there's a need for it. So there's a bit for music. I'm guessing you can put, it, so it works like an MP3 player. You can put your music and whatnot on the memory card if you insert one, and you can play music through it, through the headphones if you plug them in there, or through the speaker. So if we press that, well, yeah, there's no file, so there's nothing there. I don't know what I was expecting. Maybe it was going to come with some music, I don't know. Uh, moving across, we've got recorder files. Presumably that's where it's going to store them all, so that's fine. I like how there's not that many options on here. We don't want to make things any more complicated than this process already is. We have got a battery indicator down the bottom right-hand side, which is useful. So we've got record. Then we've got settings, and then back to playback. So just looking at the settings then, we've got three sub-menus. We've got recording settings, playback settings, and common settings. Let's go with recording. So we can, it looks like we can um, do something with the recording folder, maybe rename it. We can create multiple folders by the looks of things. That might be useful if you've got multiple projects, file management in post, that sort of thing. Scene select. My experiment was scene select and see if it makes any real difference. Um, record mode, built in mic sensitivity, that's useful. So we've got automatic, high, medium, low. So we'll leave it on auto, why wouldn't we? External input settings, which is what I'm going to be using it for, really. So we've got mic in, Sensitivity, yeah. sensitivity settings, again, auto, high, medium, low. Okay, and then something to do with an audio in. So, yeah, back, sends you back. And do, 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 do. so we've got recording filter, not sure what that is. VOR, no idea what that is. Auto track marks, 
might be useful for finding certain places and things like that. But, so that's recording settings, playback settings, clear voice, easy search, play mode, and playback range. All right, common settings, so LED, that's up top, presumably that's on and off, so we'll leave that on. Beep. Oh, no, 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 no. Definitely off. Uh, it might be useful in places where, I don't know, you might have got bright lights or something like that, um, bright daylight where you can't see what's going on, you need the audio. Um, I'm really not going to need that myself. Language, we're fine with the one we've got. Date and time if you need to alter that, I guess. Um, yeah. Auto power off. So we've got 5, 10, 30, and 60 minutes. We'll leave that at uh, 30, I think. Reset or format. Available recording time. Oh, that just tells you how long you got left. So this is with the built-in memory. It's saying it's 40, 40 hours, 40 minutes-ish. So that's pretty good. Not bad. System information. Oh, there we go. So there's settings. So if we want to record, presumably... Okay, so hit and record takes you into the record screen, if you like. It doesn't actually start recording. So it stopped at the minute. We can see we're saving into folder one. There's a timer on there. There's a little symbol top left-hand corner saying we're stopped. So this is it recording. Now what I will do is I'll put the audio up now so you can hear what the actual Sony sounds like, just as is. Nothing going into the top, it's purely as is, as is. Now I can see, so the timer's ticking along, and it does show you some sort of gain or levels function here, which is quite useful, um, I think. Um, it does sort of suggest, I believe, that you're trying to aim for the middle of this um, bar here. Um, so you're not clipping or too quiet or anything like that. Now, as a dictator phone thing, then I think you're supposed to point the microphone at oneself or whoever's speaking. So this is me now pointing it to directly to my mouth. So Mary had a little lamb. Yeah. So what I will also do now is I'll switch to what I plan to do. So I'm going to plug in the cheap lavalier mic into the end here um, so I'm going to stop this so it says saving and that's it that seems straightforward enough right so I'm just going to set it up with the lav mic so this is um, the no idea what this is it was a really cheap brand off of Amazon I think it was about well I think it was less than 10 pounds actually uh, so it, it came in quite a nice pouch, and you get quite a few accessories. Um, you get so you get a metal jack. This is useful because you think, well, what does that do, really? But when you've got a phone with a case, much like this one, the case can often sit proud, and you can't get the regular jack into it. But with one of these, it kind of stands it off a bit, which is useful. So you get one of those, you get um, a USB Type-C to 3.5mm jack cable. And you get some replacement sort of covers for the microphone. And you get an angled one, which is useful for going into DSLRs, mirrorless cameras, things like that. This is quite long as well, this cable is pretty long, so it's not bad. Um, so last time I used this, I did put the... Now this isn't a dead cat, I didn't know this, it's a dead mouse, I think. Um, just to help protect from the wind and the wind buffeting and stuff like that. So I'm going to clip this on to me top. And I'm going to plug this in to the red one. Let's go with that. Let's go with the red one. Oh, so it's automatically popped up with external input settings. So let's click on... Sensitivity settings, okay, so auto intake, so, so we're back to there. So at the minute we're still recording using, we've switched back to the Rode mic on the camera. We're now gonna switch back to the audio on the Sony, but through the lav mic. 
So interestingly, I'm just looking at the levels and it's showing as nothing. So everything I've said so far, you've probably not heard. Okay, so figured it out. So using the lav mic with no adapter whatsoever into this wasn't working. And it's probably because it's set to record mono or it only records mono. And that is a stereo end. Now, luckily it came with a bunch of adapters. So that is a mono end. So if I plug that in there, it adds a bit of faff to it, but once it's done, it's done. So if we plug the stereo one in there, so it recognizes the input as before. So it's mic in. So if we come back and hit record. So this is now the audio through the lavalier mic, through the adapter into the Sony ICDPX370. Um, now it's set to auto gain control and this, this little level is going bananas at the minute. It's on the higher end possibly, but it might take a little, a few seconds to settle down, I'm not sure. But let's play this back. So stop, saving, play. So this is now the audio through the lavalier mic, through the adapter into the Sony. So to give you some idea of the differences Bearing in mind we're indoors at the minute and the majority of what I do is outside. To give you some idea of the differences in audio between the different options I'm using, I'm now recording the video just using the built-in camera on the Sony A7 III. So this is now the audio on the Sony. So um, it'll be interesting to see how that sounds through this into um, Premiere Pro. And now, this is the audio recorded on the Sony through the lavalier mic, and that's on my chest. So, hopefully that should have been an improvement. It'd be interesting to see whether or not there's a difference between the audio as it is now through the lav mic, through the Sony, and that through the Rode mic that's going into the camera. Internally, indoors, I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference, we'll see. Um, when we come to watch it back. Outside I'm hoping it makes a bigger difference, not just in the sound quality, but the actual usability um, and the ease of use and all that kind of stuff. So if you wanted to know more um, about the menu setup, I could do a more in-depth video. If you're interested, let me know in the comments section below. Uh, but otherwise, uh, from now on, I'm probably going to be using this depending on the results. Thanks for watching.